Jesus is the answer. Above him, Jesus is the There's no other answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. I know you have mountains. You think you cannot climb. Come home, come home, come home. How many are glad to come home to his presence? words off please Please. 
message that is day two don't stay away when you get a message that is day five don't stay away when you get a message that is day 11 don't stay away tell your neighbor don't stay away there's nobody like Jesus nobody else like you
Shout of praise. Now, just when Ida was singing, uh, we just had a visitor and I want him to come up and say hello. So let us welcome Evangelist Shuttlesworth and his wife, Adalis, please. Come on. Oh, why don't you stand up and... Hey, upstairs people. Huh. Please. Let's welcome him. He's preaching at the First Love Center and he decided to pass by to say hello and to enjoy the Kodesh. Welcome. from America you have a brother for life this has been a highlight not of my year but of my life and when I stand here right now I see why the devil tried to shut the church down for two years because he hates this he hates the gathering of the saints together to lift up God and praise his name because God abides in our praises. Let me just say this about Bishop Dag Haywood Mills. I was in America and someone heard me talking about Lester Summerall and T.L. Osborne and a pastor said to me in America, do you listen to anybody who's alive? And I said, no. I said, I think all the, all the good guys have passed on. And when I said it, I felt convicted. And I felt the Lord speak to me when I was driving home. Uh, what you said is not true. I said in my word, I would never leave any generation without a witness. And so he said, they're not in your country, but it's your responsibility to find who they are. And that led me on a search that that fire of the Holy Ghost that I thought had died out because it had died out in America, never died out. The torch went from America to West Africa. And the greatest men and women of God of our generation are here in Ghana, Nigeria, 
and this great continent. So I'm an evangelist. And then the Lord had us start a church. Bishop Dag spoke at our church. We had a woman who was almost dead, down to 97 pounds that got healed that day. It was the last day she ever used a walker or a wheelchair. That's a... During the COVID lockdown, when you would do all night prayer at four in the morning, it was 10 p.m. our time, and my wife would pray through the night every night in 2020 with your church. So when I come here, I don't even feel like I'm visiting somewhere because of YouTube, I've been with you a long time. I say all that, I just say all that because it's very nice to have role models and mentors and fathers in the faith that have already done the thing that you're trying to do. And so I want to give honor to Bishop Dag and Bishop Dag's beautiful wife and his great son and this great church. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a role model of a Book of Acts church. I'm very thankful, very, very thankful. I'm thankful for Ghana, I'm thankful for Accra, I'm thankful for you and Bishop Dag. And the final thing I'll say is this, thank you for all you've done, thank you for all you've done. Just standing here and seeing this does something for my faith. There's no church, there's not a church in America I can see something like this. Seeing it builds my faith. I love you, go black stars. I made mention when I was here at the Bible school how impactful this church has been in my life because you guys have taught me how to pray. And so I didn't know I had a little bit of African in me, but when I start praying in the Holy Ghost now, I'm like, <laughs> and I, I have to just re tell it again that when I started uh, you know, praying with you guys overnight. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how it was possible. So I'd kind of like slouch over and I'd be feeling sluggish and all of a sudden Daddy Dag, Pastor Dag, would begin to yell at me and he didn't even know it. He said, stand up, pray, make yourself some coffee. And so it really was impactful for me. I learned how to pray and it really helped us in the development of our church in acquiring a building supernaturally. I'm not one who thinks things happen coincidentally. I know that these are spiritual things that have been impacted in my life through the teachings of the prophet. And so I just wanna say congratulations for being a part of such a wonderful commission. I'm going home encouraged and I also have to go home a liar because the next time I get invited to a nice church in America, I have to fake being impressed after being in here. This is unbelievable. What you guys have is special. Don't you ever take it for granted in Jesus' name. Wow, what a blessing. Evangelist Shuttlesworth all the way from Pittsburgh, America. Those of you who don't join the flow prayer meeting, you see people are joining the flow prayer meeting from somewhere else. You'll be sleeping when we are praying. Today is the last day of that sleep. Uh, ask your neighbor, do you sleep or do you flow? What an amazing blessing. All right, you may be seated. And um, thank you, Pastor Jonathan, evangelist, and your wife, Adalis, for visiting us. We're excited to have you here. And uh, we want you to keep coming. And I'm sure the Kodesh would like to. How many of you would like to have him to pass? Wow. Oh, yes. You know, since we started the first love church, we don't have visitors. 
We've not been having, so we just started. So uh, it's a blessing. And uh, this is the beginning of visiting. Oh, yes. Those outside in the Adelaide Chapel, are they part of us? Yeah. All right, I hear you guys. That is a blessing. Well, there are some songs that are messages. And um, those are some of the most important songs. <clears throat> Those are some of the most important songs that we wrote. Amen. And um, the, the word of God comes in also through the music and the songs. They are messy. The Bible says speaking to yourselves in songs. So the songs are also to speak to us. All right. So this is a very important song. Uh, Candle in the Dark. <laughs> for the disciples to disperse themselves to every nation every corner of the inhabited globe to preach to every creature without exception without exception without limitation without limitation Me. As a candle in the dark 
The commission is completed. Is the mission completed? By the ministry of the early apostles. And they say we have many souls in our own country. And if God intends the salvation of the world, He will somehow bring the gospel to them or bring them to the gospel. How can that be possible? Today, most Christians sit at ease, have no concern for lost sinners. They don't want to be candles in the dark. doesn't sound nice. William Carey uh, was a, a missionary. Not a problem. William Carey, the famous English man who went to India. All right. And became one of the, the greatest inspirations for missionary work. 
right? There was a documentary about him, and that documentary was called A Candle in the Dark. Yes. And that is how come I, I called this song A Candle in the Dark. Because there was darkness, but he was a candle in the dark. And where there's no electricity, a candle is very important. It's all that you have. So, today I want to share with you, am I good for nothing? Am I good for nothing? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Do I have my book here? Does it, you have it here? Am I good for nothing? Yeah, just give me one. In verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Beautiful, thank you. It is thenceforth good for nothing. Underline good for nothing. These are Jesus' words. It is good for nothing. I mean, if your parent or some authority figure tells you you are good for nothing, I think it's a really bad thing to say about anyone. And Jesus is saying here in this scripture, he says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing good for nothing it, it is not good for anything so that phrase good for nothing is a very dangerous diagnosis which every one of us should be very careful that we are never associated with amen it says, it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And he said, you are the light of the world. That means you are a candle in this dark world. You are a candle in the dark world. You are the light of the world. It means you are the candle of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Jesus expects us to be outstanding, that you can't be ignored. Until your ministry gets to a place where they cannot ignore you, even if they don't like you. You have not achieved the status of a city set on a hill. And how many know that it's not so easy to ignore us anymore in Ghana? We're ignored for a long time. Then at a point, you realize that it's not so easy to ignore us. And in many parts of the world, it's not so easy to ignore us. Because in many places, by the grace of God, we have some of the largest churches in many countries. And ser a series of churches in different cities, especially in Africa. So it's not that easy to ignore. Yes. I see God making you a city set on a hill. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, for me, I used to read the Bible and think of everything in the Bible as the same, especially Paul. I used to see his writings as like Jesus is speaking and then Paul is speaking. But now I, I take a particular interest and I consider the words of Jesus to be the most important words ever spoken. I, I prefer to read Jesus' word every day 
I'm always reading either Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or Revelations. Anything that is in red letter that Jesus said, I am more interested. I'm sorry. Paul was also saved by Jesus. I don't know if you know that Paul was also saved. You get what I'm saying? Paul was also, he's also saved. So anything that Jesus said that is written for us, I think we have to take it with the utmost importance. We must see it as the most important thing that is being said. It's more important than anything. And Jesus, these are Jesus' words. I always remember, these are Jesus' words. These are his words. Am I good for nothing? It is good for nothing. So I think that all of us are at a risk of being good for nothing as far as Jesus is concerned. And so, my prayer, and you know, I was 25 years old when I became a pastor. So it's almost 35 years of being called pastor. But I was a pastor before I was called pastor. I was called brother. I was a pastor. In the same church. And I'm telling you that focusing on what Jesus wants for us is better and wiser than any other idea that anybody comes up with. And there have been many ideas, many things that sound powerful in churches. Do you get it? Like They sound, they sound like it's, it's a blessing. But what I will say to you is that Jesus emphasizes all through the Bible the importance of being useful. Useful to God. Not on the, emphasizing on you being prosperous or you being rich or you being healed or anything else. But on you being useful to the Lord. And for the last between 30 and 40 years, We've been on it, and it has generated and created one of the most blessed ministries. We have even become an organization that people want to sue to get money from us. It's amazing. So what I'm saying is that let us emphasize and concentrate. If you see Jesus wrote, Jesus said these words, let us focus on it. It will bring and lead us to the greatest blessing. It will lead us to everything else that we, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are seeking for or that we are not seeking for. I cannot think of anything else that is better. If I was to go back in time and start again, I would not change what I'm preaching about or what I'm emphasizing on. I would, I would maintain the same thing. I would maintain, seek the kingdom of God first. Put God first. Put the word of God first and the work of God first. I would maintain it. Yes. If I had to go back, I would. I would. And I, I believe that it releases the greatest blessing. Teaching always about money, preaching about becoming rich and all these other things doesn't lead to prosperity. If you are prosperous, demonstrate it. We are talking about real prosperity, rent-free prosperity, generational prosperity, prosperity without begging, prosperity without owing money, prosperity without borrowing, prosperity without stealing and lying and cheating. 
So I am saying all I'm saying because we need to believe. When, as I've read this passage, put the scripture back on. Everybody should be excited. Jesus. No, no, no. The scripture I read, Matthew 5, 13. Ah. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, you should be very, very interested. Or what, what are these words? That's why I've written a whole book about this verse. A whole book. Amen. So, I want to pray for you to become a candle in the dark. A light to the world. I want to give you a new vision for your life. I want to give you the same vision I've been giving for years. To be a light to the world. A candle in the dark. Oh, yes. It's the best vision. Yes. The best vision for a young person to have a vision to be useful to God. And God cannot look at you and select some members from the church and say, these, 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 they are good for nothing. God forbid. But rather be able to point to you and say, this one is very useful to me for this. This one is very important for me. This one is the, he's counting his jewels. Is counting the people that are useful to him. So all through, you see Jesus warning. And I want to show you several of those examples. Number one, the story of the man who was given one talent. Remember, in Matthew 25 and verse 30, he said, cast the unprofitable servant out. So in that story, we see somebody that's useless. It's not, it's, this man is not of, of any use to me. I don't need him. I don't need her. I pray for you that it will never be said that you are unprofitable or useless in the house of the Lord. And I, I, I'll tell you something. Don't tell the uh, young people that I told you. All right? No, I'll be telling them that, look, Every young person is going to get older. And that God uses every age. I've not seen God not, I've not seen God use one group. Look, God uses young people. God uses people who are older. He uses people who have been through various things. Sometimes God can't use you till you've gone through some tests. This morning at the Flow Church, I was preaching about some tests that we go through. Somehow you can't be used until you've passed through certain things. Yeah. And you become calmer, mellow. Huh? Yes, you become cooler, subdued. And even sometimes God has to break you to make you a kinder person. Because a wicked person should not be a leader. A wicked man, when a wicked man is a leader, the people suffer. A wicked man should not be in charge. Pastor who is in charge and as a leader or an employer or any uh, of power authority, you have to have kind, kindness. If you are not kind, you shouldn't be in a, a powerful position over human beings because human beings are messy. A kind leader must come with a lot of toilet paper toilet roll and tissue and soap and water to be cleaning things. If God was to bring his binoculars and start focusing on everybody in this church, most of us who live here will say, I know my turn is coming.
when Stalin, when Stalin came into power, at a point, he took sheets of paper with the names of the citizens in the country, and especially his soldiers, whom he suspected would overthrow him, and personally go through the list. And it is only when he cancels your name that you will not be executed. So, when Hitler invaded Russia in 1941, he had executed almost all the army officers. It affected them. They had executed colonels, generals, everybody was gone. So, they now had to reorganize to fight back. That's, a, that's one of the reasons that the war took so long. Because if you want to now take a list with your names in and God is going to take a pen and be saying who should be gone and who should stay. How many believe that your name will... Your name is going to, by all means, you're going to go off. Yes. Yes. Have you heard of the French Revolution? It was started by a man called Albert Robespierre, a lawyer. And he came and said, you know, power to the people, equality, egalité, fraternité, and what? <laughs> Liberté. <laughs> Liberté. Liberté, fraternité, égalité. Equality, liberty, and Friendship, happiness. There shouldn't be classes. And they started to execute people. That was the French Revolution. They got rich people, powerful people, anybody who didn't agree. And they were executed. They took you to the guillotine and cut off your head. They caught the king himself. They took him, King uh, Louis, Louis the 14th or 16th. They took him, they cut off his head. His wife, Marie Antoinette, the one who brought most of these perfumes we have today. They I cut off her head. They cut off everybody's head. But you know how the revolution ended? After they had killed, they had they called the first terror, the second terror. Those of you who know history, you know all these things. I'm a science student, so I don't know history. <laughs> <laughs> who did history? Raise your hand. My wife, and she doesn't know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know how it ended? When he had, they had killed so many people, and the, one of the last days getting to the end of the revolution, he came with another paper. And everybody, the people were there in the parliament, those who have not been killed, and they were all there, and he brought a paper. He said, the people on this list are traitors and they are in the room and he's going to mention their names. Yeah. Ah. You know what happened? The people said, we have had enough. We have had enough of finding us who is a traitor and, what, and they came and they arrested him. They, the people arrested him and his top guys. And took him to the, not to the guillotine, they took him to prison first. And he tried, they tried to, he tried to kill himself, it didn't work. They cut off his long hair and they took him to the guillotine where he had been executing people. So those of you who've been executing people, remember, you may be the last person to be going down on that guillotine. And he was the last person, the one who started the whole thing. And they cut off his head. He was the last. After that, the revolution ended. Yes. So those of you who all your, all your work is pointing fingers, finding faults, spreading stories, spreading rumors, you will be the last person that the guillotine will cut off your head. You'll be surprised. Yes. To boomerang. 
It boomerang on 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 Robespierre. Yes. And it boomerang on Stalin. When he died, they couldn't go into his room to save him. He had a stroke. He was lying there. They were afraid. Oh yeah, they were all standing outside. And he was lying there with a stroke. Nobody could do anything. Yes. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I feel that there are some people here with lines and names, and you are they are crossing out names. He so said, This one is out, this person is out, this person is out. This one, I've had this, I've had this, I've had this. You will be the last person to be mentioned on that list. Hmm. I've started moving through the forest. I'm going to catch all the animals in the church. Make sure you make yourself somebody who is useful to God. Yes. Not useless. Number two, the story of the man who was given a pound each. He called his ten servants and delivered them a pound. And he said, occupy till I come. Another came and said, Lord, here is thy pound I have kept laid up in a napkin. How do you keep it laid up in a napkin? If you don't use your gift and become useful to God, you just become a gossip. And there are lots of gossips here. The worst kind of gossip you can find is a pastor who is a gossip. And every pastor who is always on Facebook and Twitter and whatever is a gossip. I'm telling you, you are not spiritual. All of you young people, always on your phones. Be careful. If you don't take it, your phone will take you to hell. to be useful to God if you can use anything use me God wants to use the Kodesh and God wants to use the QFC God wants you to be profitable and useful to him you know every time God raises up people they get to a point when they grow and they get to a point then it's like, oh, as if God cannot use them. God can use, God uses every age. God uses every age very well in a way you cannot even imagine. And like I was saying, sometimes you have to go through things before you become cool, and mellow, and usable. Yes. Sometimes you even have to fall. A gutter. So that instead of looking down on people who are in gutters, you pass and say, you know, I've been in this gutter before. I've been in this gutter before. I, want, I know that God is going to use all kinds of people here. And I've been telling the, the, the first love children, I said, God, you, you, everybody here will grow old. God will use everyone at every age. God will use the rich, he'll use the poor. He'll use those with cars, those without cars. Everybody should be useful till you die. You must always look at the grave and say, hey Lord, when you pass by Aoudome Cemetery, why are you not parked there? We have pastors who are, people who are there. Why are you not there? We have people in our cemetery. Why are you not there? God, God is allowing you to be here. There must be some use. There must be some use. There must be some use. And God wants to use you. Number three, the prodigal son story. It's another story of somebody 
who was useless in Luke chapter 15 verse 14 it's a blessing to have cars here is a son who took his father's money the Bible says and when he had spent all Oh, your father has provided for you. Hmm? You people, you know how we struggle to build this church, eh? How we struggle to buy this place. Huh? When we were attacked in 1998 by the government of the day. Early in the morning, Thursday. Bishop Eddie came to my house. Our walls have been broken. They came with soldiers and bulldozed the church over there. I said, how? I got dressed, rushed there. They've come to bulldoze all the flagpoles, everything. And we had that it had come from the top. <laughs> Wherever the top was. There were powers and there were corridors. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. In those days, when I leave church, I go with an escort of at least 10 cars because my life was in danger. Yes. My life was in danger. I didn't know what, what it is. And I announced in church that if anything happens to me, you know where it has come from. Yes. It was not a, it was not a, it was a serious situation. And on the day the walls were broken, a brother came to me. He said, I want to show you a place. And he brought me on that Thursday here. Wow. It was a warehouse. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when they mentioned the price in 1998 in millions of US dollars, we had nothing. Now, through struggles and fightings, your father has provided for you, like the two sons, the prodigal son and the elder son. Now, something has been provided for you. The Bible says that when he had spent all, he wasted. The word prodigal means waste. He wasted what his father gave to him. Now here is the Kodesh. I don't preach here anymore, but I'm doing 21 days of glory with you. But I'm telling you, are you listening? That a lot has been provided. Are you going to waste it? Are you going to waste it? Yes, you see, because many times children of rich fathers and prosperous fathers, they are spoiled children. You have a book for everything. You have a church building. You have money. You have every look at the carpet. You're walking on here. <laughs> Fresh air is blowing. Hey. <laughs> What are you doing with it? Yes. There are more people in Ghana now. Don't, listen, don't worry about the financial. Our money has been divided into four. But don't, don't worry about that because there is always a financial crisis since I was born in Ghana. Have we not always had some kind of problem? Yes. Huh? 1983, we were here. We couldn't even buy bread. Yes. Everybody grew lean. It was called Rollins Chain. The young people, you don't know all these things. <laughs> what are you doing with this building? I see all your nice, beautiful cars. It's good. But what are you doing? What is the use of all that has been done for you by your father? I am your father. 
We have provided and fought for it, fought to have something here. What are you doing with it? Yes. That's all that God is asking. And that's what is going to bring the glory into your life. Oh, yes. There's nothing about me, my, neither my family, my education, my school. No. It's only God. It's the God part. The working for God part. That brings some beauty. Yes. Any recognition that I have in Ghana, it comes just because of the work of God. That we are working for God. We are doing something for God. That's all. It's not from any other thing. So a great provision has been made for you. Great. Great. Many people don't have church buildings. And you have one of the nicest church buildings. What are you going to do? We must... I mean, I can see that the place, we must be overflowing beyond. It's like the, the problem here is space. You must start insulting me for building a small church. That I didn't have vision to build something bigger. Oh, yes, this is all, that, all, all I want to hear. Why? Why, is, why are we so small? We have to have a use for what your father has brought. Look, they say only 2% of children can use the inheritance that their parents gave them wisely. Yes. Only 2%. Eh? That means that some of you are complaining your father didn't give, leave anything for you. Fine. But those whom their fathers left things for them, many of them have done nothing. Yes. Ghana in 1957, our colonial masters left us money. They left us a currency. One dollar, one CD was one pound. They left us railways, roads, ports, motorways, aeroplanes, airports. What have we done? Huh? Listen, we must decide to be good, useful children. You have to do more. You have to stand on what your father has provided and go further, further. Yes, people don't talk about soul winning. Let me tell you, huh? You see, it's only because of something. I don't want to say some things in the microphone. Hey, you are talking of prosperity. What have you? Who has prospered? Soul winning will bring you the greatest support from God. I'm telling you, the greatest support from God. Soul winning. Yes. I want you to be a soul winning, useful. You see, you must be concerned when somebody dies. Did he go to heaven or hell? Today we just attend funerals. And you must be concerned. This man whose funeral we attend, did he go to hell or heaven? Where did they go? We must use this building, this car park. I thought you'd be having a lot of crusades on the car park. But I don't think I've heard of a crusade being held there before. Because this is a large field in Kaneshi. I thought you would block the street from here to here and have a, 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 a jam on the street, just like how they block for funerals and outdoors. I thought you would block here and block here. Oh, you are too old for such things. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong people. Maybe I should go, I should go back to uh, find some young people and talk to them. Hmm. Number four, the good Samaritan 
teaches us about a priest and a Levite who were good for nothing as they passed by a stricken Israelite. They were useless to the man. In Luke chapter 15, they passed by and they looked on him and they passed by the other side in verse 30 to 32. They just passed by. So as this guy was passing by, I said, oh, this guy he will not help. He's not, he's useless. Yes. This guy will not help. This guy will not help. This guy will not help. When the man was lying unconscious, he was lying on the floor. He was lying on the floor. And the guy was passing her. When he saw, so this guy will not help. This guy will not help. It's going to pass. Then another Levite was also coming. So that guy will also not help. Oh, that guy, they are, they are not good for such things. Yeah. Yeah, they are, they, are, they are not good for that. They will not help. They will not help. That guy who's coming will not help. I was in India and an elderly pastor over, is over 70 years old. Over, I think he's now 80. He told me, he said, rich people don't give money. He, said, he has the largest church in India. He said, rich people don't give. Yeah, from his experience. So what he's trying to say is that that man who has millions is it's not, it's not of any use when it comes to what we need. Yes. Is that what would be said about you? That, oh, she will be good for nothing. Only good for gossiping and spreading rumors and stories which you cannot verify. And you can only spread calumny and questions. But for me, since I started this ministry, there is no story that I've, there's no story about me that I've not heard of a particular sin. I've not heard of any thing that I've not been accused of before. Since I started, there's nothing that I know of that I've not been accused of before. Mention it, I'll tell you when. <laughs> you mention it, think, just let your mind go wild. Many of them, you never have a chance to talk about it. Right. And you, you are a specialist of spreading stories. That's, right. That's all you do. That's right. Yes. And you see, such people are empty barrels. Yeah. They are useless as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. Are you the, the Levite whom the man is lying there and they see you come and say, oh, this one, he will not help. This man, he will not help. If you go and see him in the office, he will not help. If, he, if you need, he will not help. This one, he will not witness. No, he will not witness. Derek Prince, you know, one time he, he was preaching, he said they had a maid and one day, they, I think they invited the maid to church. And the maid was offended. She said, no. And he said, well, what is wrong? Why, why, why are you behaving like this? She said, I've been in this house. And I hear you talking to people. You never, you've never spoken to me or even considered me for salvation. Yes, you don't know if he considered me for salvation. And she was really offended. I hear you talking to people, you speak to this one, people come to the house and I'm here, never a word, you don't, don't speak to me. When I find that message, you know, listen to it probably, but it was amazing. She, the, the girl was like, I'm here. Why, why don't you say anything to me? Why don't you say anything to me? God is going to expect from us something. When you are passing by, she will help. She will help. He will help. He will help. He will speak. He will do something. Trust me, I'm trying to give you a good vision for your life. Yes. I don't, I'm not just going to say, hey, you will marry. Okay, you receive a car. Okay, you receive a house. Oh, you receive a... It's, 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 a, it's, a not, it's not that type of preaching. 
He said, the Levite, these were the words of Jesus. He, he was passing by. They stripped him of his raiment. He was lying there and no one, they just passed on the other side. He said, we will not help. I always remember the people who helped me. And when I'm thanking them, they don't understand. They don't understand. My spiritual mother, Betty, I always thank her. She taught me how to have my quiet time. She took me to church. She took me to fellowship. She was a good person, a holy person. She taught me only good things. What a friend, a shepherd. And wait, wait. I thank her because you, you can easily have a friend who they will not share what good thing they have with you. Yes. They will not share what they know. And she organized us in a bus and took us to church on Saturday afternoon. That time, action had not started Sunday service. So it was only Saturdays. She organized us. Let's go. I'll take you somewhere. She took me to 31st, Crystal Fest. He said, let's go. I said, why? 31st, why? What are we going to do? He said, you let's go. you see. She shared with me what she had and what was good. I always thank her and I'll thank her to my last day. <laughs> but what about you? Would you open your mouth and speak? Or you just be quiet and you not share with others? You come to church and you leave people at home. They say you don't care, so they are in the house. And there are old people, young people, all kinds of people. They would love to just know what you know, to have what you have, to share what you have. Are you useless? Are you good for nothing when it comes to the work of God? Am I good for nothing? Yes. One time, I was praying, and then I woke up crying. I was crying in my dream, but I, didn't, I, was, not, I was not awake. And when I woke up, my pillow was wet and I had been crying. And then I saw in the dream cripples, people whose legs had been cut off. And then the, and then the Lord said, who will help these people? Yes. And I knew that God has, was telling me to help such people. Oh, yes. Because he knows who he can depend on. That's what I'm, I'm asking you. Can God tell you something you will do it? That's right. We started building the hospital that is now completed. I don't know if they had the video they will show you. You see people with legs cut off and modern legs given to them. Oh, yes. And you see them walking. Beautiful. How many people can God depend on? Or are you good for nothing? And I believe that as long as you are good for something, God has a reason to keep you alive. Yes. How many want to be kept alive? Why, why do you want to stay alive? I, I don't know why you want to stay alive. Like... <laughs> You don't want to die. But you go straight to heaven. And you start paradise and all those things immediately. You don't want to start paradise. You don't want to regret. Oh, yes. So today, I'm telling you the best message. Oh, yes. And I'm praying for, and I want you to listen and hear. Hear from your heart. God is saying, am I good for, are, you, are you good for nothing in the Kodesh? Are you good for nothing in the church? You have, to, you have to be useful to God until you get to the point where you become a city set on a hill which cannot be hidden and cannot be, you can, no one can hide the good things that you are doing. I thank God for Auntie Philippa. She has been our auntie for 100 years. And I see that she's still here. She was like one of the only mothers. She was our mother in the church with all her children. And she's still here. 
at the age of 80, whatever, I don't know how old she is now. Ah, huh? Auntie Philippa, we love you. You, are, you, can, you can, no one can ever say that you are good for nothing. No one can ever say that. I always remember Auntie Philippa holding a radio and speaking with quotes. As a grown-up auntie, she was learning how to use the radio like a policeman and she was speaking, working in the church office. Some of you young people cry, you can't even uh, uh, use a radio. <laughs> and number five and my last one today, the fig tree, even a fig tree is being questioned about being good for nothing. In Mark 11 verse 13, Mark 11 and verse 13, Jesus again seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. But when he came, he found what? Nothing. Wow. You are a tree and you have nothing. You must be joking. Huh? But the time of fix was not yet. It doesn't matter. You should be ready for every surprise. Jesus Christ himself is visiting you. You must have something. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Mercy. And his disciples heard it. Wow. When Jesus walks to you, remember that you are a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. When Jesus walks to you and he expects some fruit from you and there's nothing but fornication and pornography and nonsense in your life eh? and boyfriends and girlfriends and talking and gossiping and talking about everything that you don't know. That's all that he finds for in you. And he finds no fruit. Only leaves. Leaves. Leaves means it's something that comes from you, but it's not useful. That's what I'm saying. That your gossiping is not useful. Your stories are not Your rumors are not useful. Your postulations are not useful. They are not helping you. Your typing is not helping you. Only leaves. It comes from you, but it's not useful. Somebody was asked, telling me that. Somebody told me that. I said, why doesn't that person, all those people, come and ask me directly whatever question you have to ask? Why don't you ask me? I'm here. Ask me whatever the question is. I'm here. And I'm here for 21 days. If there's any question, come and ask me. <laughs> you have 21 opportunities. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Leaves, but no fruits. Leaves means you are, you are exuding something. You are bringing something, but is it fruit? I need you to be a soul winner. I need you to be a, an evangelist. I thank God for your job. You are working at the bank and it's very nice. You are being promoted. You are having three children. The number four is coming. It's a blessing. But I need you to be a soul winning Christian. I'm telling you. Don't forget how we came here. This is the only important work. I'm telling you, till you die, I'll be preaching like this all the way. Those who come after it, they like they shouldn't preach this. Yes. Yes. We are a soul winning church. Jesus is the answer church. Maintaining the aim. Jesus is walking. I'm walking to you now. Jesus is walking to you. Wait, no, sit down, sit down. He's coming to you. He's coming to you. And when he gets to you, he's coming to see if you have fruit. And when he does not find fruit, what did he do to the tree? He just made a comment. Remember that comments can be curses. Yes, he said, nobody will enjoy you again. 
by the next day, it started happening. Yeah. I pray there's no curse on anybody here. Yes. You're all going to be fruitful. Fruitful. How many have been seen? Sometimes I put on flow the people um, dedicating some of the churches they built. Yes, a lot of our brethren in America have been building their own churches. I mean, a lot, a lot also from here. Yes, a lot. And you see, it touches my heart. I say, oh, wow, it's, not, it's, it's a blessing. You, you can't say they are good for nothing. You can't say they've disappeared into America. They are, they are all doing something and bringing forth something. And if you don't, you've got two options. Either you go this way, if you don't go that way, you become this. Yeah. I take my phone. It has, it has not occurred to me before to look at pornography on my phone. It has not, not that I can't, but I'm saying that it hasn't even come to my mind before. But rather, what comes to my mind, the messages that I have on my phone, plenty, and the music. Um, eh? I don't know if there's somebody here. How come... <laughs> Your phone. What do you do with your phone? You see, you either use it for this or for that. So you're either fruitful or something else is coming from you. Yeah. That's why I want you to bury yourself. In the church always, we have work. There's always, this is a working church. If you want a relaxation church, immediately after come for transfer papers, we transfer you to another place. Can go somewhere else. But here there we are working. Every member is a worker. Yes. And we'll be laboring night and day. We'll be laboring night and day till it's over. That's why when they write on us, rest in peace. It's because we it's time to rest. It's time to rest. Yes. You are a tree of righteousness. And Jesus is going to come to you in the realm of the spirit and seek fruit. He's going to look for something from you. And when he does, I pray that he will find exactly what he is looking for. Amen. Maybe, I don't know what kind of fruit, but maybe, maybe something, something special that he wants from you. Amen. And I pray that you'll be ready when he comes. Can I have an amen? Amen. Now, In conclusion, Jesus is going to give you time. In Luke chapter 13, he said to the dresser, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit. Three years I come seeking fruit. And I find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? What's the next verse? What's the next verse? And he answered, let it alone this year. Leave it this year. Amen. How many are glad Jesus is saying, Charlie, let's leave here till 2023. How many want Jesus to give you up to 2023? To turn around, to turn your ways. Those of you upstairs, upstairs people, that's why I don't want to build upstairs churches. Huh? Upstairs people, are you going to bear fruit? Should God Jesus give you one more year? One more year. In a year from now, stand up, you. You, you, you. How old are you? How old are you? 15. Wow. A year from now, you'll be 16. By 16, you, you should be getting towards becoming a pastor. Yes. I'm giving you one year. Because I was 16 when I got saved, and I started immediately. I was 16, around 16. This is, this is the age that I was saved. Around 16. So in a year... Just a year. And you are old. 30. Already. 31 soon. Hey. He's a pastor. 
Today's your birthday. How old are you? 20. Jesus is giving you one year. How old are you? I'm seeing some grown ups here. Hmm. I don't know whether I have to give you one more year. I think you must start now. Because the years are not so many left. Bishop, you are welcome. I don't think there are so many years left. Yes. All of us who have backslidden, you are not interested in the growth of the Kodesh. Huh? You are not interested in the Kodesh. The growth of the Kodesh. And the growth of the other churches. You're backslidden. Backslidden in church growth vision. The many things that we have to do to make the church grow. For the, for the consideration, sing that part, for the consideration of those who sit at ease. For the consideration of you who sit at ease, yes. I offer these observations. Mm. If the whole body of Christians Entered heartily into the great commission and loved the lives of their fellow Christians. These are the words of William Carey. More than they love themselves and more than they love their own lives, they could become candles in the dark. They could become saviors of this world. Candles in the dark. Ooh. Oh, yes. For the consideration of those who sit at ease. Those who sit at ease. If we would consider to love others more than we love our own lives. You are in this church. Make it your aim. I know you're a businessman. You are trying to do this, to do that, to do whatever. Make it. You know, I started with my classmates, my mates from Legon, my mates from Kolibu, my mates from medical school, classes above me, below me. For years we've been on it. I thank God that I've given myself to this work, this just the church. But I, I'm glad that I focused on it. It hasn't reduced me. You know, Idahosa said something years ago. He said that God didn't call you to reduce you. And God, when God calls you, not to demote you or make you smaller or take something from you. God doesn't want to take anything from you. He wants to bless you. The Bible says in Acts that God sent Jesus Christ to bless us. Did you know that? In, I think Acts 3. He said, and who sent Jesus Christ to bless us? Yeah. That's how Jesus, Jesus Christ came to bless us. Acts 3, 26. Yeah, put it there. And to you first, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. Jesus was actually sent to bless us. He did not come to take something from us or reduce us. He sent Jesus to bless you. What a verse. What a verse. So, what I'm sharing with you, I, I want you to be interested from now let's say we look this kodesh will grow we, we don't know how but it is going to grow we want to become twice three times we can, it can work take the church growth book mega church will be on it we are going to do every time something visitation maximize sunday you say all the keys and all the ideas and what everybody we, there's no in our church you when we see you know we see a pastor you can become a pastor. If you don't like it, come for transfer after church. We, we, we transfer you to any other church. You mention the church, you know, if you like, you just mention any of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, if you say, and we say, okay, Bethlehem, if you say L, we say, uh, 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 what? Lutheran. If you say any, you, 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 we transfer you. <laughs> a for apostolic, yes. <laughs> Do you want to be transferred to another church? Oh, yes. 
Sing it again for the consideration. For the consideration of you who sit at ease, I offer these observations. If the whole body of Christians Entered heartily, entered heartily into the great commission and loved the lives of their fellow Christians more than they love themselves and more than they love their own lives. They could become candles in the dark, they could become saviors of this world if I'm preaching today me I'm so sure you can also preach you can ask all my classmates from school a man who appeared to everyone as giftless Never chosen to lead. Never chosen for anything. Prefect of anything. Leader of anything. Even in the scripture union, they wouldn't, they wouldn't choose me. If me, I'm standing here. How many have also never been chosen before? Huh? Are you sure you've not been chosen for anything before? You are just saying it because I say it. How many have not been chosen for anything before? I said, all these people have been chosen before. Yes. But I wasn't chosen. Nothing. Anything that I was a leader of, I, I started it myself. That's why my favorite song is, let me tell, no, let them start it. Let me tell you now what, what's on my mind. No one chose me. No one liked me. But you chose me. You liked me. And I believe God chooses you today and he likes you today. If you give yourself to him, God will bless you. You will not pray for a husband. Fourteen husbands will look for you. Fourteen. Fourteen husbands will look for you. Wow. You'll be choosing between this and that. This and that. This and that. Receive the grace of the Lord. Stand to your feet, everybody. How many of you want to be candles in the dark? Lift your hand. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for all these amazing Christians everywhere, inside, outside. Those in Adley Chapel, everyone, lift your hands. Children's Church, anywhere who's watching. Jesus, thanks. Thanks for bringing us. Thanks for calling us. Am I good for nothing? Thank you, Lord, that no one of us wants to be good for nothing. But we want to be good for something. Listen, look at me. You know, sometimes people want to be whatever. So I want to be a carpenter for Jesus. I want to be a lawyer for Jesus. Let me not deceive you. I mean church planting, church work. Soul winning. That's it. Church work. Thank you for being a lawyer for Jesus and a carpenter for Jesus. But the way you do that is to get involved in church building and church work. Lift your hand and commit yourself. Lord, I surrender my life today to become a church working, church building Christian. And I thank you for all the blessings and benefits that come upon my life for that. I give you thanks. I give you praise. Samanda. Lord, it will never be said of us that we are good for nothing. Good for nothing. Good for nothing. Good for nothing. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Samatabala. Palembari mono shambara masandeleba. Paleba kasparidole shamambarandali mama sandalababa. Paloba rebala masandole babandalababandalaba. Oh yes, everybody speak to the Lord in a moment. 
Speak to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mashamba Zamunda Liba. Pama Mashandala Babanda Baba. Oh yes. Thanks, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. And never be called good for nothing, unprofitable, useless. Such words will never be applied to me in the church, in my Christian life until I die. No, 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 never, 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 never. Father, thank you. No matter my age, no matter where I have reached, no matter my circumstance, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter. Matanzan Dalimum, Mentarin Konsun Jembele, Simbrena Prale Mombembrini Makisala Dama, Pere Madu Sembre Le Manda Shemende Le Bacapara Manda La Babaraba, Palamanda Barado Semerike Mandala Babanda. Oh, yes. Listen. I want to tell you something. You know, one day we had a meeting. And uh, there was an argument between the pastors. And some of the pastors said, we should come and work at this time. Come to church. I'm talking of church work. I mean, lay pastors full time. Everybody was there. And a sister stood up and said, one of the ladies, she said, We must do this, we must do this, we must do this. And another pastor stood and said, it's because you are not married. That's why you are saying what you are saying. And they said, because either you you are not married because you don't have a child. And because you are not married, that's why you are saying what you are saying. I feel that he died on that day. Because he died later. I feel that that's, that's the day that he died in the realm of the spirit. Lord have mercy. And because you don't have a child. You see, in other words, it's like, oh, because you are not married and because you don't have a child, that's why you can have time to go to church up and down. And, you know, let's, let's be careful. Let's be careful. All of us who are older, don't say it was because you are children. That is why you have time for this and you are like this. Don't say these type of things. Let's be careful. I feel that was the day he died. And he died later. In the midst of his years. Lift your hands and commit yourself to the Lord. Lord, there is no reason why I shall make another reason and say something horrible from my heart. Matara Mazode Shamandalaba. I want to serve you without excuse, without reason, without fighting, without saying nasty things, just to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessing, your power, and your grace. Receive the grace of God on your life to be a beautiful tree bearing much fruit. Lay your hands on your head. Receive the grace of God. Receive the grace of God and the help of God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, to be a fruitful tree. Within a year, within a year from now, a great change of fruitfulness. I say within a year, a great change of fruitfulness is going to take place in your life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to pray for the sick, but I want to, I'm going to pray over your, your handkerchiefs. I want everybody to get your handkerchief. And I'm going to pray over your handkerchief. That's all I'm going to do today. But before I do that, I want to just, just hold on, please. Hold on. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you are here and you are not born again, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Maybe somebody invited you. I don't know. Uh, you just walked in or you've come before. 
but you are not really a Christian, but you want to give your life to God today. If you are here like that, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. Lift your right hand like this high, and I'm going to pray with you before I, before I sit down and before I pray for the sick. Lift up your hand like this. You want to give your life to Jesus. God bless you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Outside, in the chapel, wherever. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want me to pray with you to give your life to God. With your hand up, I want you to come to me in the front here. Come from where you are standing. And I'm going to pray for you all in, in the front here. Come quickly. Encourage them. It's a long way to the back. Come all the way. Let me pray with you. God bless you. Come to God. Come on, my friend. Come to God. Come to Jesus. I want to pray with you right now. Come to the Lord. Come on from the back, from upstairs, from outside, wherever you are. You want to give your life to God. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on, let me pray with you. God bless you. your hands as well let's all it's good to give your life to christ over and over again as for me i give my life to christ every time i pray why not say this prayer with me say jesus please forgive me for my sins i'm a sinner i'm sorry for what i have done please wash away my sins Make me a new person. I have done many bad things. I am sorry. I am a liar. I am a thief. I'm a wicked person. Have mercy on me. Please wash me with the blood of Jesus. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
for saving me today. Please write my name in the book of life. My name is, mention your name, your real name. Say, please write this name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Now, lift your hand. Hey, you, you are not praying. Pray. Lift your hand like this. All of you lift your hand. Say after me, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I reject you. I cast you out of my life in the name of Jesus. Satan, from today, me and you is finished. I will not follow you again. I will not serve you again. I belong to Jesus. I am a servant of God. Lift your two hands, everyone. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. I love you, Jesus. I will follow you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone shouted, amen. God bless you. Now, before you go, don't, don't move, don't move. I just want to do that. Get your handkerchief. I'm going to pray over the handkerchief. But, you know, evangelist, I want you to give that testimony. Either you or Dallas to give a testimony. That lady who came here, if you can come. You know, we were in his church, and there was somebody who was, they say it in pounds, but I think in kilos. We understand kilos. 45 kilos. That's two suitcases. The lady was, was 45, 40 to 45 kilos. Couldn't that means use she was the very small. Yeah. Couldn't use the bathroom by herself. She was in an adult diaper. Her central nervous system was gone. She couldn't hear any loud, any noise. She couldn't sleep. She had to be carried to the toilet, carried to the bathtub, and a uh, complete invalid. Couldn't hold food down, and they told her she was going to die. And she started listening on YouTube to the 40 days of glory like you're doing the 21 days of glory and then she convinced her caretaker to drive her from New York to Pittsburgh about nine hours uh, and it was the day Bishop Dag was there and that was the last day she ever used a walker or a wheelchair she's now about a hundred she's now normal weight and she drove back to testify wearing high-heeled shoes and she couldn't even walk at all Wow from 40 kilos. You know, a suitcase is 20 kilos. So the lady was two suitcases. That was her weight. And she's gone up to 100 kilos. Yeah, normal weight. Normal weight. So at a service like this, anything can happen. I just want to pray. I don't know. I, I just saw in the realm of the spirit, handkerchiefs. So just take a handkerchief. We pray. Bible says the handkerchiefs were taken and aprons were taken from the body of uh, Saul, I said Saul, Paul, and were put on the sick. If you have any problem or anybody somewhere, I believe God with you today. Lift it up, lift it up. Jesus, thanks. Thanks for your power. Thanks for your glory. Father, I pray on every handkerchief and I pray for healing. And for miracles to take place in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone here under the sound of my voice is receiving healing, mercy. As these handkerchiefs go back home, they are carrying power. Put it into your pillow. Put it on your bed. Put it on the sick. Put it on yourself. And let evil spirits from today respond in the name of Jesus. We cast out devils. We command the dying to live. We command the curse to be broken. We command the wickedness to cease. In the name of Jesus. Let the glory of God be seen through these handkerchiefs. And let there be miracles. 
and blessings in many lives. Thank you, Father. We pray over these hankies, handkerchiefs, aprons, scarves, and we thank you that there's supernatural power. Now, he who was supposed to die shall not die. He who was supposed to end shall not end. In the name of Jesus, the glory of the Lord shall be seen. From this day one of 21 days of glory, from this day one, there shall be many testimonies. Let your dying business in the dying economy come alive. Oh, supernatural power goes home with you. Every curse destined to destroy you or your car, your house, cannot come there, cannot come nigh anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Put it on your belly. Blessings and healing and mercy from the Lord goes into your life. May you receive healing. May you be delivered. Uh, may you have many good testimonies. Oh, may all your sorrows and pain and disappointment be taken away by the Lord's anointing. I hear in the realm of the spirit the word recover. 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 In the name of Jesus. From whatever has put you down, recover from it right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody lift your handkerchief and say amen and amen. It is done unto you according to your faith. Let me hear your loudest amen. God bless you. You may be seated. When you go home, you know, put it in your pillow, put it on your whatever. If you believe, it's those who believe. The prophecy you believe, the things you believe are the things that we are doing. We are here by faith. Amen. Thank Father, thank you for a mighty day one of these 21 days. Thank you that as we return within a year, within a year, there's going to be a turnaround in our level of fruitfulness and usefulness to the master. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't come for day one for nothing. Oh, but Lord, we came to receive your word and that this word, am I good for nothing, shall galvanize us, change us, and bring about a great difference in everything. Bless, O oh Lord, where there is a curse, let your blessing go. Let your blessing go in this handkerchief to bring much healing, much recovery, much restoration of health, of life. Thank you. Thank you for the little ones. Thank you for the young ones. Thank you for the older ones. Thank you that you are doing a mighty work. Oh, Masado Bakalada. Thank you, Badihimaro Madazandala. That what you have provided here shall not be wasted shall not be wasted. Bless O oh Lord. Now receive a father's blessing. The blessing of a father that makes you go forward and never go backward. You shall increase and you shall not decrease. In the name of the father, the son, the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. And everyone shouted your loudest Amen. May the blessing of the Lord rest upon you mightily. May your rank change genuinely. Genuinely. May God elevate you genuinely in his house. May this blessing come upon you. May your family dwell with someone who has a higher rank in the realm of the spirit. May your whole household be affected by the change of your rank. May the blessing of the Lord follow you. May the Lord open his eyes and shine his face upon you. 
all the days of your life. In Jesus' name I pray and I bless you. Amen. Amen.